Good day all. In today's world, we think we have an entirely fact-based understanding of health. But do we? Have we made assumptions that aren't true and accurate? Do we look at our health through a distorted lens of statistics? Do special interests influence what we think is true? Are we missing the big picture of true health? Mark Twain once famously noted, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Numbers are used as a way of keeping track of reality. They are a model. Sometimes these numbers can be essential to understand and solve problems, but they can also be a way of distorting the real world that can deceive ourselves and others. Modern human societies have for decades kept track of illnesses and death with simple numbers. Death is a very concrete event that we can easily track, so mortality statistics are accurate. It's easy to know that someone died, but why someone died is a lot more complicated. In 2019, there were 2.8 million deaths in the United States, or 54,900 deaths per week, or 7,820 per day. These numbers are just about the same as they were in 2018. We assign a cause of death by generally giving a single reason, an immediate cause of death. These numbers are tallied up and kept as disease mortality statistics. When we hear someone died, it's almost always stated that they died of a heart attack, cancer, an infection, or something like that. Heart disease and cancer are by far the biggest listed causes of death in these statistics. This way of keeping track of why someone died seems reasonable, but these numbers are just human assigned reasons why somebody died at the moment of death. It's a model that gives a simple reason why life ended, but simple statistics don't capture the true nature of why someone became ill and died. For example, cardiovascular disease is really mostly made up of many events and choices over an entire lifetime. Every moment of life we can choose to eat junk food, be inactive, get stressed and angry, smoke, drink alcohol, take drugs, overeat and become obese, and so forth. Or we can do the opposite. We call and record a problem with the heart, a heart attack, but in reality it's a result of a whole lifetime of choices. If you choose poorly, you will be unhealthy and much more likely to die from perhaps a heart attack. But if you choose wisely, you will be healthy, usually with no major health issues. As a society, we've become incredibly more obese since about the 1970s. We can see this stark difference between photos from the late 1970s compared to photos from today. This, of course, has an impact on our overall health and well-being. Obesity is primarily a lifestyle choice that results in deaths that are counted as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, respiratory infections, and so on but we don't record the death as an obesity lifestyle death. We record it as a cardiovascular or other death. Obesity is skyrocketing across all the modern countries because of easy 24-7 access to enormous amounts of junk food, lack of exercise, stress, etc. The end result is predictably decreasing health and increasing deaths classified in several categories. But as I already stated, these deaths are primarily from poor lifestyle selections, but instead, deaths ultimately fall into other statistical categories. One of the leading causes of death that isn't kept track of at all is medical error. If one of the reasons someone died was a medical error, it's simply classified as something else. However, multiple studies show that hundreds of thousands of people die each year due to the medical system. Most of these studies show that it's the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer. According to Martin McCary, Professor of Surgery and Health Policy at John Hopkins School of Medicine, this problem is not being recorded in national health statistics, is vastly underappreciated, and is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Definitely check out all the links below on this devastating and largely ignored problem that distorts our national statistics even further. When we eat something, take a nutrient or medication, many different effects can happen in the body, some positive and some negative. In the case of medications, we have adopted a language where positive things that a pharmaceutical company likes to promote are listed as what the drug so-called does. Anything negative is put into a special category of side effect. But in reality, all these are effects. There's no such thing as a side effect. The term side effect is really marketing language that we used to fool ourselves into thinking there are two categories, but there's only one, effects. The de this deception that we engage in creates a more positive illusion of medications instead of showing the actual reality. This is yet another way reality is distorted. The widely accepted language of side effect distorts the perception of these substances by the public and the medical profession. 
you can see the serious and so-called side effects of this one medication which includes death. If all these effects were directly listed without marketing and profit preference, these substances would be less likely to be used and safer alternatives would be sought. I once thought that this chart represented measles deaths, but the mortality rate fell from the 1800s when life was incredibly, almost unimaginably difficult and people's immune systems were horribly compromised, to the mid-1900s when people were far, far healthier. And this fall in mortality happened before any vaccine was available and without any significant medical interventions. In the case of measles in England, the death rate had fallen by over 99.9%, .9%, almost 100%, before the introduction of the vaccine in 1968. So clearly, a recorded death from measles wasn't just from a measles virus. What this chart really represents is an overall health chart that we have been counting as measles deaths. It's not only measles, but all the data shows a massive decline in mortality from multiple infectious diseases, whooping cough, scarlet fever, pneumonia, flu, etc., in multiple countries without vaccines or medical interventions. So a person doesn't die from just a measles virus or another microbe. Instead, they die because of many immune system related issues, but we have incorrectly focused on a virus or bacteria as the cause. There has been a debate between germ theory, bacteria and viruses, and the terrain theory, health and the immune system. Analysis of mortality data attributed to measles or other microbes show that the germ theory is largely false. The terrain, your immune system, your health, is a far better model of reality. Yet a massive medical system making huge profits is based on protecting you from germs through medications, vaccines, masks, etc., instead of recognizing and emphasizing your overall health. If your health is optimal, you don't typically have to worry about these microbes. The data all show this. But because of our emphasis on the microbe as a cause of death, we have distorted reality and deceived ourselves. Today we use a test that detects a fragment of RNA to create illness and death statistics, the PCR test. Not only does this single test determine if you are a case and infectious, but also if you die, that is the sole reason why you did. But in one paper, the PCR test has been called useless with a 97% false positive rate with high cycle counts, which most laboratories use. It calls into question all the cases and deaths based on this single test. The way the test has been used has created very questionable statistics. Other factors might be mentioned, vitamin D deficiency, obesity, pollution, etc., that significantly affect health but are largely ignored by the medical system. These factors are were sometimes debated, but ultimately the single cause germ theory has prevailed. As with measles and other infectious diseases, the solution is medications and vaccines, not in improving the health of society and individual people. And it's likely uh, due to these germ theory based actions, lockdowns, fear of others, and so on, that people's health has worsened with increasing obesity, depression, vitamin D deficiency, etc., all of which will result in more deaths in the future. Again, the germ model of health and these statistics have governed how we view the world and how we have reacted. Our model of labeling illnesses and death from a single cause has made us less healthy and allowed for a massive explosion in spending in a huge medical industrial complex. We are now spending about four times more as a percentage of GDP on so-called health care than we did 50 years ago, nearly 20% of GDP. All the while, we have become less healthy as a society. This massive medical system largely controls the government and media. Anyone that challenges the official narrative is attacked and ridiculed. The news media, public health officials, and social media all work together to make sure the official story is the only one that is recognized. Theory becomes a hard fact in the public's mind, as fear and name-calling are often used by various people to crush dissenting opinions. In 1905, Albert Einstein published his theory of special relativity. He upended the existing theory of gravity that was established by Isaac Newton. At the time, Newtonian gravity was considered settled science. I fear if Einstein had published his ideas today, the people who declare, I follow the science, would have attacked him for being anti-science. He would be called an anti-gravity loon, a gravity denier, or other names to insult his ideas. Those who were making money off of Isaac Newton's concepts would pay fanatics to attack and marginalize anyone who even remotely considered Einstein's ideas. 
Mainstream news pundits would ridicule and debunk his anti-science position. They would snicker that such an idea was made up by a lowly patent clerk. Select scientists would appear on these programs to roll their eyes and laugh at the stupidity of denying the existence of gravity. Facebook's so-called fact-checkers would have labeled anyone who shared his ideas as false and would point to the undeniable established truth of Newton. People who blindly parrot whatever the mainstream media reports would join in the mob mentality of s attacking the so-called gravity deniers. Memes would spread like wildfire on Twitter and other social media, mocking anything to do with Einstein's anti-science nonsense. In short, Einstein wouldn't have a chance to in today's world of so-called settled science. Unfortunately, the mainstream media repeats what governments and the dominant medical paradigm tell them. They blindly follow, using the illusion of numbers to drive the narrative. There is never a challenge to existing thought, and so over the last decades, and in particular over the last year, it has driven up fear and decreased the health of the people in our society. We've let a relatively small group of people dictate how we should all live and behave based on their belief system. Our reliance on simple statistics repeated as if they are reality has led us down a path of less health and well-being. The truth hidden in plain sight is that 99.9% .9 of health is up to us. It's our right and our responsibility. It's not the responsibility of the media, government, or m medical system. We all need to shift in our thinking to one where we try and to live healthfully each day. Eat a whole foods diet, exercise, avoid toxins, be in nature, pray and meditate, live simply, live life with happiness, joy, laughter, and love. Most deaths are from lifestyle decisions and the medical system. The dirty secret is that with improved health, you, you have a decrease in deaths from heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, infections, and so forth. You need less or no medications as well as decreased depression and anxiety. You spend less or no time being sick in a medical system that doesn't even keep track of the deaths it causes. Your overall quality of life and happiness goes up. What could be better than that? Links to the information used in this video can be found down below. If you found this information worthwhile, please share it. Thank you for your time. Have a stellar day.